The user inputs the parameters into the, into the system. Segment two will be the optimizer, where we use the op uh, optimum optim tool, which is a built-in function for MATLAB, which is like Lincoln. Well, five code functions have been developed for this use. Three constraints. There are three optimization modes that the software can handle to the specific needs of the user, and there are three generation modes for the generation of initial guesses for the optimizer. And I will not really go into this in detail because it can be found in the user's manual, but I will demonstrate some of the capabilities in about time. And then the last segment will be the simulator. This is where the software simulates the whole bifurcation point and returns you the limit cycle which we are supposed to find if we can find the whole bifurcation. And then the software user's manual is in chapter 6 of my report and you can see it over there. So um, to begin with, I would like to talk a little bit on the cost functions that have been developed. I would like to use cost function 1 to illustrate what the whole bifurcation is. So basically the whole bifurcation exists when the, when the eigenvalues have a zero real part and non-zero imaginary part. So the first cost function is a very simplistic take on it where we just search for real parts which are zero. You see that it does not distinguish between imaginary parts which are zero or non-zero. So this is not a very good cost function as you can see over here. The next one makes use of the idea of a penalty function. The penalty function that we have used looks something like this. It penalizes points which are close to zero. So we have built a cost function based on this, uh, based on the inverse relationship and the proportional relationship. Um, and the plot, the surface plot of the cost function is this. So as you can see, if uh, the, the optimizer would like to find the minimum, which will be somewhere here, as you follow, as you follow the cost function chart, and, the, and this minimum is found when the real part is zero, and the imaginary part is non-zero, away from zero. So this specifically looks for the point of the whole application. And as the beauty of this cost function is that you can change your delta to change the curvature of this cost function to allow, um, set, um, allow it to fit different parameters of different systems. So um, moving on to cost function 3, we make use of the fact that a purely imaginary eigenvalues has um, an angle of 90 degrees, I over 2. So uh, the beauty of this cost function is that it has very strong convergence into points where we have real part is zero and imaginary part which is non-zero. So this is a very simple cost function, but we have found that it has been very effective and it has very strong convergence property and it is low in computational complexity. So moving on, we have cost function 4 and cost function 5. Cost function 4 and cost function 5 are based on known mathematical tools to look specifically for purely imaginary eigenvalues. And um, cost function 4 starts as we use the famous Hurwitz criterion as, uh, as we have learned in year 2 um, Hurwitz criterion is mainly for stability criterion which we know but however in 1994 in a paper written Hurwitz criterion can be extended to look for the Hopf bifurcation as well to take for example a polynomial of order n the Hurwitz formulation, the Hurwitz matrix formulation looks something like this and as we continue for n is even it looks something like this for n is odd it looks something like this so uh, the Hurwitz Hopf bifurcation criterion will be this, as stated in the paper in 1994. The, the first line will be more familiar to most of us because that corresponds to the Hurwitz stability criterion. So the second line will be new because this is specifically for the Hopf bifurcation. It says that the Hurwitz matrix of order n minus 1, but the determinant of it must be 0 for the Hopf bifurcation to occur. As such, our cost function will be to minimize the the absolute value of the determinant of or the n minus one of the Hurwitz matrix. The next one will be the cost function five based on the Sylvester criterion. Take for example a polynomial of order n where n is even. Um, the case where n is odd will not be discussed here, but it's basically similar and it will be found in the report. So let's make the substitution of z equal to lambda squared. We can construct from this the even and polynomial even and odd polynomial of our original polynomial. The idea behind this is that if the original polynomial have purely imaginary eigenvalues, these two polynomials will have roots which are the purely imaginary eigenvalues as well. So with these two even and odd polynomial, we can construct the Sylvester matrix where, where, where it is a concatenation of the top part which is originated from the even polynomial, the second part from the odd polynomial. And then we need to introduce the idea of Sylvester sub-resultant matrix which is generated by this algorithm 
And an example, for S0, we require from the original Sylvester matrix to remove the first and the second column, the first and the n over two columns, no, sorry, rows, to generate the Sylvester sub resolving matrix of order zero. So well, the theory goes like this. Since there is a conjugate pair of imaginary eigenvalues exist, these two must hold. So our cost function is this, and the constraint will be will be an inequality constraint associated with this. Okay, so now uh, moving on, we'd like to introduce a constraint which we have been using for optimizer. It will be a stability constraint. The stability constraint states that um, all our real parts of our roots must be must lie on the left-hand plane of this, so that our system will be stable. And this is what is being used because the whole fabrication requires all the it requires the system to be stable on top of it having a purely imaginary set of eigenvalues on the imaginary axis. Okay, so now moving on to our software demonstration. I'd like to demonstrate my software on three different sets of systems. The first of which will be systems that exhibit a Hopf fabrication. Second of which will be systems that have not, uh, have been proven not to exhibit a Hopf fabrication. The idea behind testing on these two is to ensure that my, my software is working well and that before we can move on to the third set of systems which have not known to produce the Hopf application but have not been proven not to produce the Hopf application. A total of seven different systems were tested over the course of the past few months and uh, I'd just like to show four of them um, in order to illustrate what I want to discuss. So first up, I'd like to talk about the smallest chemical reaction which leads to the Hopf application. This was proved by Thomas Gulen and Reinhardt Heinrich in the 1980s to exhibit the Hopf fabrication. It has six free parameters. This is the schematic, and this is the chemical reaction level. So um, I like to do a simple simulation with my software. So over here, what I'm doing now is I'm loading the equilibrium point and the objective function into the software. As you can see, these are the, these are the equilibrium points which have been which are being loaded into the software. And then now I'd like to run my optimizer. The optimizer now has been input with 10 initial guesses. Um, so uh, as we run it, this will be using cost function three, which is the angle criterion. So as you can see, the first run result in low first row results. So that's, that's not very good, so let's run it again. So, uh, so you know, So as you can see, now the optimizer has found a point with the Hopf application. So now it plots the graph associating with the Hopf application. As you can see, uh, limit cycles were, were found, and this thing is oscillating. So uh, this proves that, uh, in fact, there are more, not just one set which was found. So um, this is very good. So uh, going back to the software, going back to the presentation, one of the results that was found over the past few months was this result. And uh, as you can see just now, this is similar to one of the results that was found. Well, the main, the main result that was that was obtained from this simulation was that we collated all the different parameters that led to the Hopf application, or 23 of them, and we plotted them K1a versus K3 plus K4 plus K5. We found the linear relationship. This is important because this conforms directly with the theoretical results, and so this shows that our our system, our my so our software does not lead to an error results. We actually, we actually find the Hopf application, which is the correct Hopf application, as proven by theory. So um, that was a small chemical reaction level with six free parameters. This is one with 14 free parameters, and it is in the living organism, which is more of interest to the biologists or the chemists. It is in the deoxyland discordium um, uh, amoeba, and it is very important for survival for this particular uh, amoeba. This is the signaling mechanism network. And uh, I'll not go into simulations, but this is one of the simulations that was found uh, in the same manner as I did it previously. So, uh, well, the parameters were plotted, three of the parameters were plotted, and um, a large region of oxidation was detected originating from the Hopf fabrication. So now we know that in systems with Hopf fabrication, the software will be able to find it. How about in systems that have been proven not to produce the Hopf fabrication? Let's take, for example, this case, mitogen activated protein kinase. MAPK one step cascade. This is an extremely important um, signaling mechanism in eukaryotic cells, and it is very important for 